Hello everyone, this is Glenn Elliott and welcome back to our second installment of Inspecting the Inspector Color. In the previous tutorial we went over how to make sure that your clips were properly selected to load them into the viewer to edit them in the color section. We also went over the three major boards in the color section which are the color, saturation, and exposure. Now this color section in the Inspector is actually chock full of functionality and we only scratched the surface. So in this tutorial, we're going to round it out and actually finish talking about the rest of the functionality that it offers. Now the first thing is balance color. This thing right here says balance not analyzed. That is the ability for Final Cut Pro to look at a shot and balance the color what it thinks it should be. For example, if a shot was shot with the wrong white balance, if it's too blue or too red, it will try to look at all of the pixels, all of the color in your image and try to balance it. The the problem is, I f find from experience it, it's not very um, effective. I feel like if a shot is a little too warm, it'll cool it off too much. If a shot's too cold, it'll make it too warm. And additionally, on top of this, what makes it difficult is once you click this and it adds the settings, to what, you know, it changes your image to what it thinks it should be. Once you go, it does that and you go into the color board, all these will be at the neutral setting. So it doesn't actually show you a representation of what it did. So even if it got it close and you just needed to tweak it, you can't do that. You have to start from scratch. It's not going to show you the correction, unfortunately. And I'm going to illustrate that now. All right. So here's a shot that was shot too warm. We're going to go ahead and let um, Final Cut Pro do its magic with um, balanced color. So we have this shot selector. We're going to go up here and simply just click this little square to the left here. Turn it on, and with that one click, it balances the color. Now, after you click, it does neutralize the skin tones a bit. They're not as warm. However, if you look closely, it introduces a lot of green into the shadow areas. Um, something like this can easily be fixed within a few seconds in the color board just with using the different sliders for uh, balancing the color manually. So I feel like balanced color is just a little bit oversimplified. And unfortunately, as I mentioned before, once you add the balance or click the button and enable it, when you go in here, you don't see anything. Everything's set to neutral. So it doesn't even show you what it did to get this uh, this color. So I avoid it. I've never actually seen it yield great results. Um, sometimes it's mediocre, but if I do it manually, it's always better. Next up is match color. Right below balance color, you'll see match color. And what that does, it allows you to take a clip and match its tonality to another clip. So what you do is you wanna select the clip that you wanna change, and then once you select it, it'll give you an option of selecting a reference clip by which it wants to inherit its color tonality, if that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is this shot that was shot in a vineyard and this was shot um, right outside the church. So it has a little bit of a different color tone as a different time of day, but I want these two shots to match. So this is the color that I want and this is the one I wanna change. So we select the shot that we wanna change we click the little box to turn on match color. So now if you look closely, our cursor looks like a position tool with almost like a camera icon next to it. It's essentially working like an eyedropper at this point. Basically, you click to sample what portion of the shot that you want the tonality to, um, to pull from. So you can do it multiple times. So I'm just gonna click here, and as soon as I click, you see the colors change on the right. And as I click different portions of the clip, you'll see the colors keep changing. Now, as you can see right away, it does get the colors closer to the tonality, but the problem is this is using a mathematical formula. It's looking at all the color tones of the image and applying them like a broad stroke across the whole image. So their skin tones are getting kind of a weird purplish grayish tint. It just, it doesn't really work very well. Now, if there's two shots, um, say you're doing a multi-camera shoot and you have one of your shooters that's off by a few Kelvin, like the, it's a little warm, a little bit cooler than yours, something like that because it's the same area, you can click this and it, it will work pretty well. Um, that, that's the only only case I ever see it work. Again, just like balance color, I find that um, doing it manually will yield better results um, every time. So um, again, you can keep clicking around here. Once you find a uh, section that you know changes the colors to your you know your, your liking, you have to click apply match to apply it now. So now we, this shot is supposedly matched to the shot. Um, I don't really feel like it is too well. Uh, again, I really don't feel like these two um, automatic settings are very effective. So I usually stay away from them. 
All right, guys, so there is light at the end of the tunnel. Not all the functions of the color section of the inspector are bad. Um, in fact, the last two portions that I'm gonna cover are awesome. I'm a big fan of them. They're very effective um, and I use them quite often. So if you look closely at correction one, to the right of that, there's two icons. The first icon is add color mask. The other icon is add shape mask. So these two obviously add masks to your image. And what that means is it allows you to define certain areas of your image or mask off um, certain areas of your image to allow you to selectively color correct your image. Now we're first going to start with the color mask. Now the color mask traditionally is used for like color isolations, things where you know the girl's dress is red and everything else is black and white. Um, it's not my cup of tea. I use it in a little less uh, traditional manner and I'm going to show you how I, I usually use this. Now we shoot with uh, digital SLR so the dynamic range that we're awarded is a little bit low. I mean compared to something like a red um, or a black magic cinema camera so this shot here was shot with a Canon 5d mark 3 um, it, it's pretty much impossible to get a perfect exposure here um, the highlights in the sky are blown out and this is a little bit underexposed but uh, we can improve that by faking it and I use that with uh, you know I achieve that by using the uh, color mask so I click that and now my cursor when you drag it over the image becomes an eyedropper and what this eyedropper does once you click and drag is it's going to start making a selection as as I drag out here from the center it creates a ever increasing circle in size and everything inside that circle is going to be added to the mask you have to be careful here because as you make it larger and it starts hitting that corner of that building it's going to pull the entire building in there so uh, we're just going to get it pretty close and this is pretty decent we're leaving out a pretty big portion of the sky now once you release it's created the mask now you can't see your mask so once you go down here this little slider here is for the softness of the mask and even as I drag here I'm still not seeing the mask so this slider is useless without holding down the option key if you hold the option key and drag the slider it'll actually show you the mask so I'm just going to drag this to the right and try to get those dark areas of the clouds included in the mask so that's pretty good I'm not really worried about the specular highlights in here that's not going to affect it too much so now we made our mask we're pretty happy with it we're going to step into the color board here once we step in, there's one major change now that we added a mask. At the very bottom left, you see mask, and it says inside and outside. When we're inside, by default, it will include everything inside of this mask that we just made. Outside is everything outside of the mask, which is every, you know the building, which actually comes in handy because we can adjust the sky and then just swap it and then adjust the uh, the building. So first, we're going to work on the sky. We're going to go to exposure. We're going to midtones. We're just going to pull this down, just add a little more contrast in the sky, so it's a little bit, you know make the sky pop a little bit more. So we can just mess around with the highlights a little bit. Like I said, you really can't get much highlight detail back. It's Once it's gone, it's gone. So just from that, that little change there um, added quite a bit of contrast to the sky and I can toggle it here. You see the sky became a lot more, I guess, ominous looking. Um, if you want, you can even add a little blue or saturation to the sky so you can push it up. It's a little high, but or you can even uh, you know, go into the color board and take the midtones, start pushing blue into the sky, make it a little more blue. Um, so we're just gonna do a little mix of both of those. Now, I'm pretty happy with the way the sky looks. Maybe I'll go a little bit more just to make it more dramatic here. And then now we're gonna switch to mask outside. What basically is gonna ignore a mask and, and select everything inverted. So that's basically everything else from this building down. So we're gonna click outside the mask. And with this, I feel like the midtones are a little dark. So I'm just gonna push the midtone slider up just a hair, maybe a little bit of highlights. Maybe pull the blacks down, a little more contrast. It's all about finesse. You don't wanna to go too, too far with it. So. This is the way our image looks now after those two um, changes. So we're going to go back here and I'm going to show you, it's pretty pretty astounding how, how much different it looks. So just from using this um, color mask, you can actually uh, increase the perceivable dynamic range of your image. And I'll show you another example here. So here is um, some establishing shots through the vines on the slider. Um, these vines are like, you know, silhouetted on the sky, but what if I didn't want them to be as silhouetted? I can go ahead, uh, make sure this uh, clip is selected, go in here and create a color mask, and we're gonna grab an area that can grab the green and the shadows. So I have to watch picking up that sky in there. Okay, so I missed some. 
So as you can see here, the mask isn't very, very clean. So what we can do is we can actually make another selection. If we hold down shift and drag, you see the little plus sign? You can click and add to that selection. So now I want to pick up more of this black in here. And likewise, if you hold down the option key, you see the minus sign? You can actually remove a selection. So shift will add to the selection um, and option or alt will remove from the selection. So I'm just going to go ahead back to the softness slider, holding down option again and just taking a look. And that's it's pretty good. It's going to do what I need it to do. So now what I'm going to do is make sure we're inside our mask by default. Go into exposure and we're going to push the midtones and try and recover some of those midtones in the viney areas here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We might just push this up a little bit. All right, now we're going to go to the outside. Why not just, you know, pull the sky down just a hair? Oop, that's saturation. Exposure for outside mask, which is the sky in the background. Let's pull this down. So you can see how it's working. This I really probably wouldn't do. Uh, but say we want the sky to look more like uh, it's sunset, orangey type of sky. We'll grab midtones and we'll push it towards orange. So see how we're making that sky orange in the background. So with these quick settings, this is how our, our shot looks now. And previously, um, this is how it looked before. So it's pretty, pretty di drastic uh, difference. Okay, so finally there's the shape mask. Directly to the right of the color mask is the icon for the shape mask. If you click that, you'll see a circle appear and that's the shape of your mask here. It has several points on here to change the shape of the mask. Uh, it's got the four green points on either corner. You can stretch it out, make it more like an oval, egg shape. Um, the white dot here, the clear dot here rather, you can click and drag it left and right to kind of square the corners off. It also has a center handle to kind of rotate it. Um, the out outer circle here is actually its feather. You can adjust the feather of, of the mask. Now right now you're not seeing anything because we haven't defined anything. We're just defining the shape of the mask first. So once we have the mask set up, we can step into the board here. And again, we, we have mask inside and outside. So inside is going to affect everything here and it's going to feather our changes from here to the edge. So if we say one at the center of our frame to be a little bit brighter, we can start to raise the, um, the exposure in the center. As you can see, it trails off on the edge here. However, what I found um, a good use for this is actually to add a really nice vignette. Um, a lot of vignettes in um, various programs are basically just a black to transparent vignette and they honestly look awful. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the shape mask to make a really nice vignette that actually uses, uh, it's more of like a color burn on the edges. So this is actually how I use the shape mask more often than not. So you're gonna, we're going to add our shape mask, we're going to just stretch it out, we're going to make it similar to the shape of the um, the frame here. We're going to square the corners off just a bit and we're going to step in here and once we're in we're going to go to outside. We want to leave the inside alone. We want to affect the outside because we want to burn the outside of the image here. So now we go to exposure. I find if you drag the um, global exposure, it tends to really crush the blacks. As you can see on the edges of the frame here, the blacks are getting really inky and dark and it just doesn't look very good. So what I found um, a good alternative that to that is just affect the highlights and midtones. So we can bring the highlights down so it gets dark without really crushing stuff and you can just kind of pull midtones down a little bit too. Now um, once we're here, we can have obviously adjust the mask. We can adjust the feather or fall off of the mask the location of it. So right now we're just kind of putting a little bit of a highlight in the frame to the couple. That might be a little extreme here. We'll just back off just a bit. So usually looks better when it's more subtle. So here we just have a little subtle highlight, um, you know, kind of highlighting the couple in the frame. It just kind of draws your attention more to the center of the frame here. And I can show you toggling the uh, effect on and off here. So it just kind of burns the edges. It's really subtle, it's very effective. You can also add multiple shape masks by simply clicking the shape mask icon multiple times. So you can have multiple shape masks within the same frame. So that pretty much concludes um, our look at the color section of the inspector. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.